Hey, Zeal Brothers here. I want to address this idea that some people are saying that socialism is Christian. And they get this thing from um, two, two uh, main instances in the Bible. No, actually three. There are three forms of what they might call socialism in the Bible. The first one is that in the Old Testament, when manna came down, people took manna and everybody got manna, right? So basically there was a system of um, subsistence living living that God supplied to all the people. And after God supplied this to all the people, the people, not only whoever had much shared it with who, who he who didn't have much. And so there was not only was God sustaining the people by giving everybody food, right? Without exception, but then the people also redistributed that. So that's the first instance. The second instance is when Jesus was traveling with the disciples, they had a money bag and they all put their money in there. And they all had the same common money. So that's the second instance. And then the third instance is in an early church, people sold their properties and they gave it all for the common good so that nobody felt that what was theirs um, was their personal belonging. They all had everything in common. So these are the three instances that people will use to describe Christianity as communist and defending of communism. And let's just or socialism. So let's just talk about these three things. The first one is that God gave the manna. Now, when you look at God giving the manna, it is true that he gave it to everybody. But when you look at um, Jewish law, when you look at the ancient laws, um, you get a description of a society that is capitalistic to a great extent. In other words, people are free to earn what they earn. And if they don't earn to suffer the consequences of not earning. And that is simply the fact of how that government worked. So this instance of manna was something that and we can talk about it. Why did they have manna? Well, they had manna because they were walking across the desert and they didn't have any other food. Now, some people might say, well, that would be a good description of why we need to have policies that catch people at the bottom. I wouldn't disagree with that. But what God was doing when he gave out the manna was not creating a system of socialism because everybody had to go gather it. Right. So everybody had to work to still get what was theirs. Now, people also shared. And I think this is more a, a description of the fact that people were moral. Now, you'll notice that they didn't go around just taking from people. That's what socialism is. Socialism would be if Moses and Aaron sent the priest out there, they sent all the Levites, Levites out there and they were just taking stuff from people and giving it to somebody else. That is not what we see. What we see is people going out and gathering. And when they have a whole lot, they simply share it. And that's simply just a Christian virtue to want to share. The second instance of Jesus with his disciples, that is not a system of socialism. First off, because it's so small, it's between 13 people, right? It's Jesus and his 12 disciples. But the second reason that it is not a system of socialism is because this is no different than when you have a charitable organization and everybody is paid out of the same um, source of income. It's no different than that. Is that a form of socialism? I would argue that it's not because it's not saying that everybody's income is not theirs. It is simply saying that we all have a goal and that we're all raising money for this common goal. It's a charitable organization. That's simply what it was. It was a small one, 13 people, but it was funded by a lot of the ladies, leading ladies. A lot of people were giving money to Jesus and he, they were supporting his ability to go out there and roam around the country and talk to people and not necessarily have consistent work. So he was sacrificing his ability to earn. Right. He took he went away from his carpeting job. Peter went away from his fishing job. They all left their jobs and they were given the word. But then they were being funded by people. And that's simply just the model that we have in the current church right now. Right. You go to your church. A lot of people say, why did the church talk about giving so much? Well, some church is just scamming you. I ain't going to lie. But. For the vast, for I ain't even gonna say the vast majority of churches, because there's a lot of churches scamming. But good churches, right? Good churches. The reason they gather is because the pastor is giving up opportunities to earn so that he can minister with the word. And you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't be one that's opposed to the pastor making a living off of the gospel, as long as he is not, you know, out there, um. Hmm. Living like some of these pastors 
and we could talk about that on another video. But some of these guys are scumbags too. But these are the same churches that's talking about giving ninety nine times every every second, talking about walking in front of them, make sure you giving, looking and criticizing how much you giving and all that stuff. Um, now there's a place for criticism, right? If you giving just pennies on a dollar and you can't and you can give more when you are faithless in your giving, right? You're not investing in what God is doing. So there is something to say about that. But this idea um, that people should not be giving or that churches are sucking up so much money that could be done, used for other things. It's a bad idea. It's an immoral idea because it's the idea that pastors should just sit there and suffer and be in destitution when they're earning for giving out the word. There are good pastors, pastors like of our church, where our pastor literally gave up a six figure job and took a job that made 45 grand a year. Right. This is um, at the time. That's what he was making, which is about the average income of what a man is making. Well, above that, a little bit above that. But it wasn't what he was making. He went into debt to start his church and he still hasn't recovered. He still doesn't really have a retirement fund. So when you talk about most men who are getting a ministry for legitimate good reasons, um, they're not wealthy off of the gospel. They're giving and they are living in middle class income. And that's basically what they should make off the gospel. Now, if they do other things outside of that, they, they write books and things like that. Well, then, you know, maybe they can't earn more money. Um, but for the vast majority of pastors, <sighs> that are honest are living middle class lifestyles and that's what they should do um and that's what the jesus and the apostles um were doing well minus one apostle then you have the early church in the early church what they were doing was simply a commitment to once again that charity model where they gave and they gave sacrificially if you look at what the apostles were doing, you will notice that most of them had professions that they could not do in the city of Jerusalem. So let's think about Peter. Peter's a fisherman. He couldn't fish like he wanted to in the city of Jerusalem. He actually lived when he lived. He lived near a sea or he lived near a lake and he couldn't do that where he was living when he was in Jerusalem and the Holy Spirit had commanded them to stay in Jerusalem. So he was literally living off of the charity of others. And what he was doing was he was going out and giving out the gospel. He was working hard, but he wasn't working hard in a way that somebody could say what he was earning. This is no different than the system that God had established to fund the temple. If you look back, actually, in the Old Testament, when people brought a sacrifice, they didn't just burn up the whole thing. What they did was they gave some of the meat to the priest and the priest was supposed to take some of that meat and take some of the money that they offered to God. And he was supposed to live off of that. If you look at Eli and his sons, if you read that story carefully, what you'll read is that they actually abused that system. But the truth of the matter is that a lot of priests, the reason that the, the, the right religion of Israel often fell into decay is because people from Israel did not regularly give. There were times when they did give and they gave, you know, and they really showed out. But most of the time they did not give. They did not give faithfully. And that meant that priests couldn't fulfill their role and just worshiping and focusing on giving the word and because of that people didn't learn the word the religion decayed and you see this coming in books like nehemiah you see this coming in books like ezra where nehemiah when he came back from um the when he had to go back to the king and he comes back and he sees that people were not giving the levites had to return to the fields because they literally were starving because nobody was giving so nehemiah came back and he basically had to kick some butts but they couldn't keep the religion going without some kind of funding. So this is what was going on in the early church. People were sacrificing and they were giving, but they were giving for the needs of those who were working full time. And then some people were just selling properties and doing things like that. And they were going above and beyond. They were giving everything for the sake of the gospel and they will be rewarded. But that in no ways entitled anybody to what was theirs. That's what Peter literally said to Ananias and Sapphira. He said, why was yours? Was it not still your ownership? Didn't you have possession of it? The reason that Ananias and Sapphira were judged was not because they didn't give all, but because they lied, which suggests still that God still honored their ownership of their property, just not the deception of how they gave it. So 
Christianity does not support socialism. And anybody who says that is not thinking critically about the issue.